telling impact stories, again, <laughs> we've been talking a lot about impact stories, but um, this is just so, so huge. Um, one of the, the people that I follow in their research is uh, Professor Russell James, and he uh, researches giving, particularly in the area of planned giving. And um, I also follow the people that run a something called the Storytelling Conference. So there's actually a full conference on storytelling. But both of them seem to agree about the point that one of the things that really compels donors is if you tell the story and allow the donor to actually finish the story. So you mm. you set up a proposition and then the donor begins to see him or herself in that setting and the donor becomes the hero of the story by completing that story. So give them an opportunity to be a part of something big of a story that is not yet finished. And I think your donors will, will respond well to that. Year end giving is a perfect time to tell the story of what you've been up to. What have you done this year? What are you planning to do next year? Um, what what, are, what is your vision for the future? What are you gonna do more of so that people can get excited about it? <clears throat> this also helps you establish uh, credibility and trust. Donors, again, want to see an impact. And so by telling them your story, you've affirmed for them that what you said you were gonna do, you actually accomplished. Um, here's just one quick example about telling a story and asking a donor to finish it. So you might say something like this, <clears throat> for the past nine years, it has been our privilege to fill backpacks with weekend meals for 79 children at the elementary school. It costs $144 to feed each child during the year. Beginning this September, we're expanding this ministry to another elementary school where 64 identified children are at risk of going hungry if we don't act. Please ask God how you are able to respond to God's goodness in your life and the needs of these at-risk children. Hmm. So you've told the story, you've given them some context, some, some numerical facts that enables them to understand the impact that they can have. And you've told them they can make this story um, a good one. It can end well with their support and with their help. Hmm. Joel, you wanna talk about some keys to success? You bet, you bet. So um, in addition to talking about the number of backpacks, the number of schools, one of the keys to success is tell the story of one changed life by a backpack. If you're talking about how many children may have attended children's camp in your church or how many teenagers were a part of the Disciple Now weekend, those data points are important to show you know, quantity and to, to kind of give some metrics around the number. But boy, what really begins to move the heart is the story of One Changed Life. So Christine, last year I participated in a charity concert uh, where the concert was raising money uh, to support human an organization that was uh, helping rescue uh, young people from human trafficking. And so in the intermission, uh, the executive director had a number of slides with data, metrics, where North Carolina stood in relation to the rest of the states in, in, in the United States, and then particularly in North Carolina, where we live, what were the hot spots um, in, in cities? And a lot of important and significant information, but I wasn't inspired. Where I became inspired to give is when the executive director introduced us to a young lady who was with us that afternoon and shared her story. And then when she said, there are hundreds like me who want to be rescued, I'm able to put a face a person, a situation in connection to this organization that was rescuing dozens and, and dozens. It was the story of one changed life that moved us from the number of people to my heart really is inspired to give. Tell the story of one changed life. Always connect giving with, with ministry. Um, and, and by that, when you tell a story, 
be sure that you're saying to your people, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your giving. Your giving made that story possible. It is your giving that wrote you into that story. You're a part of that story. So when you tell a good story, you share a story of ministry impact, thank your people and connect their giving to that specific story. And again, remember facts and figures are not the story. They inform, they quantify, but it's stories that people remember and it's stories that move the heart and touch the emotion. Christine, you and I have used the phrase uh, that great stories connect the eyes of the head to the eyes of the heart. And at the end of the day, generosity really begins in the heart. That's where the heart, and there's a, a scripture that you and I use quite a bit, that where your treasure is, there your heart is as well. Jesus connected heart and treasure. And so stories, not facts and figures, it's stories that touch the heart. Use weekly offering talks. So you may say, well, we don't even take the offering uh, anymore. It doesn't matter. People still give. Find a moment in your worship service to share. Uh, and you might even say, we don't take an offering anymore because of this or that. But thank you for your giving. And you may give at our website or you may give online. You may do recurring giving. We want to thank you for the various ways you give. And I want to tell you a story this morning, how your giving has made a difference. So even if you're not taking the offering physically, you still want to do weekly talks. If you say, well, we can't do it weekly, well, then do it bi-weekly, bi-monthly. But please, please, please find ways in your worship setting to help people see that their giving is making a difference. And then as we've already shared, always use donor-centric language. If you're writing a letter, a thank you note, if it's a, uh, a quarterly giving statement, um, use donor-centric language. And, and Christine and I can help you with that. We've got examples uh, that show the difference between an organizational-centric communication and a donor-giver-centric uh, communication. Yeah, there's some some great resources on Giving 365 about donor-centric language. I did a, a video on that, and there's also some other materials. So um, if you're not <clears throat> understanding or not clear about donor-centric language, uh, you can certainly find some more help there. Um, Joel, one of our guests talked about impact stories. Um, they're trying to implement giving uh, impact stories, but haven't been able to get staff to really help support the bubbling up of those stories. Um, what do you suggest for, for him to kind of help to get those staff members a little bit more engaged in telling stories? And, and I tell you, I can't tell you how many times um, we hear that very thing. Uh, you've got people that, that understand the power of story and they want to see more of that in, in, uh, in the worship setting. But then you've got staff who have one hour, they've got all these various elements that uh, they've got to figure out how to work in the, the liturgy, the music, the homily, the message, all these things, and, and they're on a very tight time frame. So I think, I think, number one, don't give up. Don't give up. And then look for ways to help them see how it can be done in a way that is not going to take a lot of time. A good giving story is, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. And then help them see, if you can, how these stories will impact giving that ultimately will impact their ministries, which will ultimately then impact the church at large. So you have to sometimes connect the dots for them. Uh, but, um, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. Just continue to kind of try to push that ball down the field. But I, I will say, and Christine, I think you'll, uh, you found this to be true, too that it doesn't work without the staff um, support. And one of the churches where it's worked the best is where they have made a part of their weekly staff member, staff meeting rather, a part of the weekly staff meeting, each staff member is invited to bring a story. Bring a story from this past week from your ministry and share it. And then they've got four or five stories that they can pick from. Um, and so the, the staff are bubbling up the stories, sharing the stories, and then they've got this vault of stories that they can pull from. So 
Uh, don't grow weary in well-doing. In, in due time, you'll, you'll reap a harvest. Just don't give up.